Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can back up your Linux systems with GR Sync. Now, this is a video that has been highly requested on the video suggestions form uh, that I posted earlier this year. And uh, I will be posting that in the description section as many people were looking for it. Um, so many of you are asking me this and essentially how I go about backing Linux systems rather than um, Linux servers where, where, where you would essentially want to back up a particular a directory uh, it could be the web directory or any uh, other particular directory that is of interest to you so uh, many of you have been asking how to do it for you know for standard systems uh, many operating systems uh, provide this service automatically or do provide you with snapshots and one example of a fantastic program or tool is GR sync now many of you uh, or, or for those of you who have uh, been with Linux for a while already know about R sync all right so uh, GR Sync is essentially a GUI implementation of R Sync and simplifies the entire backup system and offers a variety of functionality, more of which I will get to in a second. All right, now there are many backup tools out there for Linux. However, I personally find GR Sync to be the most convenient and the most trustworthy when restoring and sort of copying, comparing files, etc. You get the idea. It's very, very convenient, especially when restoring systems. I've been in uh, positions where I've uh, made changes to my system and I wanted to revert back or I simply wanted to to, uh, to actually view an earlier snapshot of my home folder. You get the idea. I simply wanted to go a step back or any particular time. Now, whatever backup policy you have for yourself, I personally back my system up every week. Or if I feel I haven't made any changes, then I will usually move it to uh, a month. And I usually keep about five snapshots from the last five months. Uh, but that's me. So uh, again, it's all up to you. Now, you might be asking, well, what exactly is rsync then? Well, rsync is an open source command line utility uh, that is uh, used to efficiently transfer and synchronize files between a computer, external hard drives, and of course, network uh, computers by comparing the modification times and size of files. Uh, so essentially what it's trying to, 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 to do here is to allow you to make copies of files and it distinguishes between these two files or these multiple copies of files based on the date uh, of their modification, the size of the files, etc. So it, again, it's, it's really just about creating snapshots here and it does it really, really well. All right, so the other question you might be having is, well, does rsync come with uh, all Linux distributions? And my answer to that is yes, it does come with all Debian-based distributions as far as I know. Installing it is very, very simple. You can install it with any of the package managers you have. Uh, and you might be saying, well, why aren't we using the command line utility? And the answer to that is with GR Sync, it actually teaches you the correct uh, arguments you can use. And I personally prefer using a, a nice click tool to get everything done. All right, so uh, I have it right over here and that is GR Sync. But before we do that, let me show you how to get it installed. So again, you can use your aptitude uh, package manager and I'll just expand that. So to, in to get it installed, you want to type in sudo apt get install rsync. All right, now by default, I'm currently on Parrot OS and, and uh, rsync comes pre-installed. So let me just enter my password here and uh, you can see it's already installed. Now, if you want to install GR Sync, you can also do the same. So GR uh, sync, uh, so the right over here, and we'll hit enter. And there we are, it's the latest version. Of course, you can also do it with the Synaptic Package Manager if you cannot find the particular packages you're looking for. And once that is done, you should be good. All right, so the first thing you want to do is start up GR Sync, and it'll give you this nice little welcome page here. And uh, hopefully, you can see what's going on. Uh, if not, I will zoom in uh, the video during uh, the post uh, processing of this video. So, in any case, uh, so right over here, you have your file sessions uh, and help. All right. So we'll leave help out of this in, in terms of sessions. These are your various backup profiles. So for example, you may be wanting to backup a particular folder and then you want to separate that session for your system backup. So, you know, I could be uh, backing up my system and then occasionally backing up my video files that I use for video production for the channel. So I would create two, uh, uh, two different sessions and so I do not mix up the backups and the files. And then within file, you can browse the source and the destination, which I'll get to in a second. You can also simulate and that comes, into, uh, that comes in handy when performing a comparison tests of the files to see if uh, the, the backup and the destination, the backup and the original directory, sorry, are the same and contain the same files. It's a very simple way of checking whether there haven't been any files modified or there aren't any differences between the backed up files and your current working directory if you haven't made any uh, changes in particular. So 
You then have your execute. You can also run the rsync command line and check out the preferences right over here. All right, in our case, we are simply just going to get started with the default uh, session. Of course, to create one, you can create right over here and you also delete them right over here. So our default one, again, you can simply go with this and uh, you can see that I already have a bit of a configuration, but I'll go through all of what is going on right over here. So uh, the great thing about uh, GR sync or R sync rather is that you can back up whatever directory uh, or drive that you want. So it is really, really convenient. So you can back up entire drives. You can back up any directory, any file. It's all up to you and what you prefer. Now, by default for my system, I like uh, I like going with backing up my home directory. All right. Now, I currently have my home directory installed with my system. Uh, and I know that isn't recommended, but I currently have one SSD that I'm currently working on. Uh, although I don't like separating the home and the system, the main Linux system uh, from each other. So that's all up to you. So what you want to do is click on the, uh, the source. All right. So the source is the files or the directory you want to back up. Now, let's say I want to back up the home directory. So let me go into my file system. I can click on home here or I can actually go back and just make sure it is uh, it is on home right over here and hit open. All right. And that is essentially going to back up the home directory. Now, of course, I want to back up uh, my uh, I've just created a test directory within my user. And this is to, to essentially just explain what's going on here. So I'm going to go into my test folder and I want to back up the entire test folder. Now, the test folders components are simply a test.txt file. And I'll get to that in a second. So I simply select test folder and hit open and then my destination. So what I like doing is I like backing up or making my backups on my external hard drive and my backup drive. So I have uh, redundant backups. So I'll just click right over here. And of course, you can back it up to you. You can also back it up with the file system or any of your drives here. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be backing up on my desktop. I know it, it really isn't uh, much of a backup if I'm doing that. Uh, so I'll just uh, this is just simply for demonstration. So I created a backups folder here and I'm just going to save it right in here. All right. It's very important to specify the destination directory uh, directory uh, correctly. Now, uh, again, you can customize this however you want in regards to whatever files and directories. So that's all up to you. Uh, now, the important bits here, if you are going to make a fully fledged uh, snapshot, uh, it's important that you preserve the time, the owner, the group and the permissions. These are all a must. However, if you don't want to do it, you can exclude them. And right over here, it tells you the permissions you can use if you are going to use rsync. So, for example, if I wanted to do this, I would say rsync T, P, uh, O and G. All right. Now, those are the arguments that I would specify and it will show you this when you actually perform the backup. All right. Now you can also delete on destination if you want to, of course, delete the files on the destination which are not present in the source. We don't want to do that. You, verbose is simply just going to give us more information. Ignore existing. So skip updating files that already exist. This is already uh, this is if you have those particular files already and you're simply overwriting a particular backup and you don't want to copy files that already exist or haven't had any changes made to them. I don't really need that right now because this is a fresh backup, although it may come in handy. You then have your skip newer. So this will not update any newer files. All right. That is also very important. You can keep that as well. Uh, do not leave the file system. Do not cross file system boundaries. Also important if you want to do that. Uh, show the transfer progress. Uh, the size, we, we don't really need to work with that. Windows compatibility, of course, you can uh, provide uh, a workaround for Windows FAT systems uh, if you do have that limitation. And of course, if you're working with Linux, then that does come into play. You then have advanced options, which is my favorite. Uh, we don't need to preserve any checksum. As you can see, uh, we're not really comparing any uh, any particular checksum here. So uh, you can go ahead and take a look at all of these options. This is simply going to preserve the devices, keep partially transferred files, make backups. So make backups of uh, existing files in the destination. So this is essentially creating redundant backups. Uh, you can also disable recursion. So if checked, the subdirectories of the source folder will be ignored. That's something that you want to use very carefully in case you don't, uh, in case you, you, you really want to uh, back up only top level directories. And my favorite, you can also compress your files. If I'm backing up large amounts of files and files that I don't expect to use, uh, and you know, I'm just keeping them for redundancy, uh, then you can also compress them. We'll take a look at that in a second. The other options you can check are, they aren't really important. You then have your extra options here. So these are the commands that you can execute uh, before rsync. So these come in handy, in my opinion, if you're backing up a large amount of files or an entire drive and you, you're going to be leaving your computer. So what you can do is you can um, 
you can execute a command after rsync has completed so you can essentially shut down your computer once rsync is completed and you, of, of, of course you can run that as super user and provide any notes and this is going to be unique to that particular session that being said we can get started so what we are going to do here is if i go to alexis uh, to my home directory into the test folder and we take a look at the test.txt file this is the file that we're going to be backing up you can see it simply just contains some text and if everything is successful, it is going to copy all of those files into the backups folder. And I know this sounds simple, but of course, uh, the main uh, things that you need to take into consideration are it is preserving the time, owner, group and permissions, which is really fantastic if you are going to restore your system. Once you're ready to go, you can write, you can click on this uh, little two cogs right over here and that'll make a full run or a go. Essentially means get started. You then have uh, a, a simulation over here, which is also known as a dry run, and essentially tells you or simulates uh, the um, the entire copying process and whether or not you'll run into any particular errors, whether you're updating newer files, all that uh, good stuff. All right, so I'm just going to hit go, and it's going to complete successfully. You can also take a look at the rsync output. So you can take a look at the rsync uh, command here, and you can uh, understand how that works. It's really very simple to use. So again, rsync rtpogv and the progress that is for verbose output. Again, uh, I mean, that is slightly different from verbose. That shows us the progress. Uh, so then you specify your source directory, right? So then uh, you want to, hit uh, once we're, we're ready there, you can also check the, uh, the backups directory to make sure the files were copied. And there you are. If you just take a look at the date modified, uh, the size, etc., you'll, you'll be able to see that it preserves all the permissions. 